Hey folks, today I'm going to show you how uh, I do a 1911 trigger job. Uh, it's not just going to be a um, basic polish job of the internals. It's going to actually be recutting the, the sear nose and uh, recutting the primary and secondary angles on the, on the sear nose. Uh, it'll also be tensioning the uh, mainspring uh, or the sear spring and uh, I'll show you what weight uh, mainspring that I use. Uh, so uh, I hope you get some benefit out of it and just sit back and uh, I hope you enjoy it. Now, uh, truth be told, these aren't the final uh, parts that I'm gonna be using in this gun. I'm using my 70 series Colt as a, uh, as a platform to work off of. So these parts are, are gonna be the uh, parts that I'm just gonna have in it for right now until I decide on what to do with it. But uh, I just wanted to be able to show y'all some um, um, footage of how I do a uh, 1911 trigger job. All right, first thing you need is a good jig to perform your trigger job on. This is a Series 1 Power Customs jig. This is what I've been using for years and uh, this is what I'll be using today. Uh, on this jig, you can adjust the elevation of, the, uh, of this platform right here. This will create the angle on your primary and secondary uh, cut. Uh, so what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna show you, I'm gonna adjust this angle all the way down. Then I'm gonna show you um, how high I take the primary angle. Okay, so we're all the way at the bottom. So now I'm gonna go up four clicks. One, two, three, four. Now I'm gonna set my um, uh, friction device on the back so this won't move. And I'm gonna take my sear, which is already here. I'm using a, uh, I'm not gonna use my factory Colt sear I'm using a um, uh, Les Bear sear that I've got. It's a tooled steel part, and uh, I took it out of one of my Les Bears, so I'm gonna use it. So, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and mount my sear into my jig using the appropriate pins. Let's see here, there we go. And I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna cut my primary angle on my uh, uh, sear. Now, there's a couple different ways that you can do this. Some people cut their secondary first, some people cut their primary first. I'm gonna cut my primary angle first. So, I'm gonna sit it in there. This is gonna give me my primary angle cut. I'm gonna use a set of stones that I bought years ago and I've been using you know, the whole time. Um, let me get these out real quick. These stones are from Brownells. They come in that little box. Um, I'll show you what you get. It's actually a pretty good deal versus buying them separately. You get your Rough Grip India Stone. You get a Medium Grip Stone. Then you get a Fine Grit Polishing Stone. This is a ceramic stone. Uh, I actually like uh, I'd rather have a hard Arkansas stone, but uh, uh, this ceramic stone works just fine. Just remember, don't use oil on your ceramic stones. You, know, you can use them on your other stones, but not on your ceramic stones. It'll run them. So you only use water on your ceramic stones. So this is what we're gonna do. We're gonna cut our primary angle on our sear. Some people use a uh, clamp to uh, clamp the sear to the jig. I just use finger pressure, okay? So I'm gonna turn this around so I can use it. I'll put some finger pressure on here. I'm gonna go ahead and cut my uh, angles. This is gonna be my primary angle, all right? When the sear is faced this way in the jig, this is gonna be your primary angle when the sear is curved towards the jig. So, I'm gonna go ahead and cut this real quick. Okay. 
Now, what I'm gonna do is take that out of the jig and look at it to make sure everything is uniform. And I'm gonna take a little more off. can tell but I have now cut the primary angle on my sear so we'll see if you can see it or not I've cut that primary angle now what I'm gonna do is go in and cut my secondary angle on my secondary angle I'm gonna change the angle that I'm gonna be cutting and I'm gonna go up 20 clicks so let me loosen this up. We're already at four. We've got four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. Now, I'm gonna put my sear in like so. I turn the curve away from the uh, elevation port. Now I'm gonna give some upward pressure on the bottom of the sear with my left uh, finger. I'm gonna go in and I'm gonna cut my secondary angle. So basically, let's see if I got this good. Getting close, getting close. Look at it again, and we are very, very close to where we want. All right, now, I don't know if you can tell, but we've got our primary cut here. We've got a secondary cut here on the bottom. So you can see, I don't know if you can see or not, but there's a primary cut on top, secondary cut on the bottom. What that does, is it meets up with your hammer hooks just like so and your sear will sit on your hammer hooks like that and that's what releases your hammer so your sear is pressed rearward it rotates on a pin that's in here it releases the hammer to go forward the slide comes back the sear spring pushes the sear back into the engagement hooks and that's what you're going to have right there all right, so now what we need to do is polish these surfaces up real good so that we have smooth contact between all mating surfaces. I like to go in one direction when I'm doing this and not back and forth. And it doesn't take a lot. Once you use this medium stone to smooth everything out, then your, your, uh, Ceramic stone puts a good high shine on it. So we're still working on the secondary angle. And the secondary angle isn't as important as the primary angle is as far as smoothness of the trigger. All right, now we're gonna run this down 16 clicks to get back to where we were. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. Now we're at four clicks up. We're gonna reinstall our sear into the jig. Make sure it's flat up against the side. We're gonna to go to our medium stone. Smooth the rough edges that are left behind by the India stone. ceramic stone to polish it. The reason you want your sear nose just buttery smooth is because if there's any imperfections on it, it's gonna cause drag 
against your hammer and that's going to add weight and grit to your trigger pull. So let's get this done. Uh, I can feel it in the stone. It's just buttery smooth. Now, don't know how well this is going to come out on camera, but the sear nose has now been cut, the primary angle and the secondary angle, and everything has been polished. So like I said, I don't know if it's going to come out or not, but there you go. Now, one thing I've already done is I've trued up my hammer hooks. Um, I'll take my India stone, which has got a perfect flat edge on it. I'll put it in here and I will true up my hammer hooks. Uh, these hammer hooks need to be perfectly flat and 90 degrees all the way across. That way you can have a good engagement with your sear on the uh, hammer hooks. Also, I've already taken my hammer hooks down to 18 thousandths. So, I don't know how well this will show up, but these are your hammer hooks here. You got your flat area, and then you've got your hook that your sear rides on right here. These are called your hammer hooks. All right, I've squared them up, made them a perfect 90 degree angle on both sides, and then I've taken the length from here to here down to 18 thousandths. Uh, if you leave your hammer hooks too long, you can have creep in your trigger. Creep is once you take the slack out of the trigger and you hit that nice firm wall on a 1911, if your trigger moves any at all before the, the hammer falls, then that's considered creep. So basically creep is your sear nose dragging across these hammer hooks as the sear moves on the hammer. Now, if you cut these hammer hooks down, some people say 20,000, some people say 18,000. I take mine to 18. If you'll take these down to 18,000 and they're nice and smooth, you gotta polish them up with a good smooth stone. If you'll take those down to 18,000, then uh, normally, as long as you've done everything else right, you're not gonna have any uh, creep in your trigger. So, that is just a basic, very, very basic tutorial on how to cut your primary and secondary angles on a sear and what you need to do to your hammer as far as getting a good, consistent, uh, light trigger pull. Um, let me reassemble this and I'm gonna show you with my reassembly how I tweak some of the springs. All right, I'm gonna show you this out of the gun. That way uh, you kind of get a better uh, view of it. This is your sear spring. It goes uh, underneath your main spring housing. Your sear spring, this leg, this third leg is what I call it. This is for your grip safety tension. This is for your uh, disconnect reset tension. And this is for your sear spring tension. Now, when your sear is in the gun, it will be sitting kind of like this and your sear spring the leg of your, your sear spring will sit on the leg of your sear like this, and it will create rearward tension on that sear. Now, a lot of times these sears springs will be bent way forward and they'll create way too much tension on that sear um, leg. And that is gonna uh, add weight to your, your trigger. Also, this middle spring a lot of times it will be bent really far forward and it's gonna create tension on your disconnector right here, okay? Your disconnector runs up and down on that spring, just like that. And if you have a lot of trigger or a lot of spring tension on that, it will cause weight to your trigger because your trigger is also pushing directly against that spring. So I've already pre-tensioned these springs by bending them back just a little bit. You don't want to just take them and bend them. You want to go very slow on your, on your bends to make sure you don't crease the spring down here. Now, this is a Colt style spring, but it's by EGW. And these are my favorite for uh, making uh, good, light 
triggers. So uh, let's reassemble it and then I'll show you uh, how I uh, test the trigger on it. All right, let's reassemble this gun. Now, I've already got my sear and disconnect already set in place. And this is how I reassemble it. Take a pair of needle nose and I grab my disconnect down here at the bottom and I feed it up, feed the disconnector up in through the disconnect hole and I set it there as a unit, all right? Now, next what I do is I take a small slave, slave pin and I insert it on the weak side of the grip, the right-hand side, and then I'll take my, my pin and I will run it through just like this. Now, I've got my sear and my disconnector installed, okay? Now I'm gonna take my hammer, and if you can notice, I've polished the sides of the hammer down in here, and I've lubed them up. I put that back in the frame. I will take my hammer pin, and I will set it down in through the hammer. Now I'll flip everything up. I'll take my sear spring. I will use a groove cut out in the bottom of the frame right there. That's where this little hook on the end of your sear spring goes. I will sit it in the hook and then press it down onto the uh, sear and disconnect. Now, I've already changed out my spring and my main spring housing to a 19 pound spring. Factory weight spring is 22 pounds, I believe. That was specced out by the government back in the early 1900s, back when primers were really, really hard. Primers aren't that hard now. <laughs> So uh, even your Russian primers aren't as hard as those old primers were. So a 19 pound spring will reliably pop almost any primer that you're gonna find. Now, we're gonna set this um, hammer strut down into its correct position. And what I'm gonna do is go ahead and set my, do a test run on this. I'm gonna cock my hammer back to where it's fully back. I'm gonna feel my, I'm not gonna drop the hammer, but I'm gonna feel my trigger tension. That trigger tension, let's see if I can get something to point this out with. Let's see. I don't know if you can see the three legs of the spring in here. You've got a, a leg right here. This pushes up on the sear. You've got a middle leg up under this hammer strut that pushes on the disconnect and it also pushes on the trigger. Then you've got this third spring right here and that's just for your, your uh, grip safety. So what I'm doing now is just feeling how much tension is on the back of the trigger. That'll kind of tell me. Whenever you reset the trigger, after you shoot it, once you shoot it, you pull the trigger to the rear and it stops. The gun cycles, you let the trigger out till it resets. The disconnect, the middle leaf on the leaf spring is what pushes the trigger forward and gives you that positive click when the trigger resets. So you don't want it too soft. You want a good audible uh, tactile um, reset, but you don't want it too heavy either. It doesn't need to be too heavy. So it feels like we got good spring tension on that. Here's our take up and the trigger. And now what I'm gonna do is just feel the brake on the trigger. Oh, and that is nice and crisp and clean. Yeah. Now, you'll notice I'm not letting the hammer fall forward and hit the frame. You don't wanna do that. So I'm holding pressure on the hammer. Actually, I'm gonna take my thumb and I'm gonna put it right here and prevent the hammer from hitting the frame. So let's see what that trigger pull feels like. Oh yeah, that's nice. Zero creep, none at all. Let's see here. Oh, real nice, real nice. That's a sub four pound trigger all day long. It's probably around three and a half to three and three quarter pounds in my estimation. So now what I'm gonna do is reassemble the gun. That's just how I set it up to uh, test the initial trigger pull. Now I'm gonna set up the entire gun, reassemble it, and uh, we're gonna test the trigger pull and uh, see what we can come out to. Now, before we do that, I wanna tell you, sometimes after you do a trigger job, 
you will have to break that sear nose in just a little bit. You'll have just a little bit of creep, a little bit of grit. One way to do that, and you don't want to do this a lot, but one way to do that is to grab the hammer, pull it towards the front of the gun like it's falling, put some forward pressure on it, and then pull the trigger at the same time. What that does is that breaks in that sear nose. So I'm pulling the trigger forward, at the same time I'm pulling the trigger itself. I'm pulling the hammer forward, and at the same time I'm pull the, pulling the trigger itself. And you don't want to be Hercules and try to yank the hammer forward, but you do want to put some forward pressure on it while you're pulling the trigger, and that'll help break in that sear nose. Let me try this trigger one more time. See what we got. Oh man, that is good and clean. That is a good trigger pull right there. All right, let's reassemble this thing and uh, see what it's like in the gun, and we'll take some uh, weight measures. All right, so we've got our gun reassembled. There's a little oil all over it, but that's okay. First thing I'm gonna do is check it for function. Let's see how it feels. Oh, nice, very nice. Resets nice, firm and audible. Pushes that trigger out. No creep. Very nice, very nice. Now I'm gonna check it to make sure I don't have hammer follow. Do not do this on a consistent basis when you've completed a trigger job on your gun. The only reason you do this is to check to make sure it doesn't have hammer follow to make sure that your trigger is good and safe. What I'm gonna do is drop the slide from the slide stop on an empty chamber. Some people are gonna tell you it's a wives tale. It is not a wives tale. Do not do this on a regular basis. The only time you'll do this is when you're just checking for, to make sure that your trigger is safe. So I want you to watch the hammer. Didn't fall. All right, and I don't have my finger on the trigger. One more time, just to make sure, didn't fall. Now, that's what you want. You don't want your hammer to fall. If your hammer falls, you got a problem with your trigger job. It's either spring tension um, back here on your sear, or you have cut your hammer hooks wrong. Or you're, you've either cut your hammer hooks too short, you cut your sear nose at the wrong angle, or you don't have enough tension on your uh, sear with your leaf spring. So now we're going to, I haven't done this yet, so we're going to uh, test this uh, trigger pull with our digital pull gauge and see what the trigger pull comes out to. So let me get my trigger pull gauge out here and uh, we'll try it out. Now, before I did it, it was at about four and a half pounds, four and a half pounds. So now we're gonna try it and see where it comes in at. I'm going to say it's going to be under four pounds. So let's do it nice and slow. Get a good, accurate reading on it. Well, I didn't set it, so let's set it. All right, here we go. Three pounds, 2.9 ounces. Three pounds, 3.3 ounces. Three pounds, 4.8 ounces. Three pounds, 1.8 ounce. And last one, three pounds, 1.5 ounces. Let's do an average. The average is basically 3.3 ounces, three pounds, three ounces. So I've taken more than a pound off of the trigger, still kept it safe, and um, um, it was actually pretty simple. Now, I've done these triggers over and over and over and over and over again. With that sear cut, uh, sear angle cut, I can take these triggers all the way down to about two pounds. Um, it all depends on what spring tension you use. I wanted a little extra tension on this one. I wanted to keep it right around three, three and a half pounds. 
So that's about what I got. Um, let me clean this up a little bit. I'll show it off. So I kept this one with a little extra spring tension. Uh, if you'll notice, I put my slim grips on here. Got some paper towel on there. Put my slim grips on here. And I think it looks pretty handsome. Um, but uh, now, don't get me wrong. This isn't a full-on trigger job of your 1911. There's other things that are involved with doing a 1911 trigger job. This is basically just cutting the sear nose and tensioning the springs. Um, you've got other areas in there that you need to polish and clean up. If I polish my trigger tracks inside the frame, uh, polish my trigger bow, polished all my internals such as my disconnector, uh, my sear spring, um, polished uh, uh, my mainspring cap. Uh, I've probably dropped this down to under two pounds without having to um, tweak the sear spring any more than I already have. But uh, just those areas alone creating friction uh, also create weight felt weight on the trigger pull. So um, hope y'all enjoyed the video. Uh, again, don't take this as being a full on trigger job. This is just to basically show you how to recut the sear nose, what jig I use, which is a power custom jig, and what stones I use. Uh, other than that, there's more areas and more aspects to creating your trigger job on your 1911. But um, uh, I've already ordered um, a cylinder and slide ultralight sear and a cylinder and slide skeletonized uh, spur hammer. So it uh, will still be a spur hammer like this, but it's going to be skeletonized. And uh, it'll still keep that classic line, but it's going to give me about, once I get done with it, about a two and a half pound trigger pull. So, uh, and it'll still be very safe. Uh, it's not, I'm not gonna have to worry about uh, hammer follow. And um, that'll be the first part of this build. So, uh, I hope y'all enjoyed it. If you did, give it a thumbs up. If you didn't, give it a thumbs down and leave some comments down there. Thanks for watching.